Peter, you are in one of your greenhouses oh, yeah, yeah. right they now, protect them. built in Singapore, hiring and, and employing Singaporeans, growing food for Singapore. Give us the story of Comcrop. Yeah, that's absolutely right. So uh, Comcrop was Singapore's first rooftop farming company. It actually started as a community project, which is where the name Comcrop comes from, community crop. So it's shortened down to that. So it was originally a rooftop farming project that was piloted on the Scape building, which is a sort of a, a sandbox uh, entrepreneurial building in the middle of the Singapore shopping district at Orchard Road. Uh, and through the work that we did there of growing hydroponic vegetables, we were able to eventually over a couple of years obtain a farming license from what is now the Singapore Food Agency. Uh, and that also uh, allowed us to work with uh, the different government agencies, including the URA and, and others, in order to make rooftop farming an accessible change of use for rooftop buildings. So more than just planting trees or plants or flowers to beautify or cool down buildings, farming was included in that. So if you're a small restaurant or, you know, uh, a small business wanted to grow for yourself, you could do that. But what that also allowed us to do was then scale up to do industrial size rooftop farming on on buildings here in singapore so well, that, what we then did i wanted to jump right? in on peter because uh, hydroponic mm. farming is nothing new of course i saw my first hydroponic farms in singapore i think in the early 2000s out yes. in nim chu kung and when i was discussing this with glenn he was saying no these guys different scale different level whole new playing field it's on an industrial level so give us a give us an idea of the size the scale and how you're achieving this yeah so um so exactly it's all about scale so we work with jtc to be able to take the uh the rooftop car park of what is a food production building in in woodlands uh which uh gives us uh, over 3,000 square meters of controlled environment space that were built at green, greenhouses. So, so that's, that's basically, for, for those friends, yeah, watching on Facebook Live, that's five of the type of greenhouses that you're standing in front of now, right? That's right, that's right. So so we've, we've evolved this over the years. Our very first green, uh, our very first hydroponic systems were just open-air A-frame systems that we were growing in Orchard Road. And they worked quite well, but, but they also uh, taught us a lot about the type of things that we would have to uh, deal with growing in a, an urban environment and one of the basic one is control of weather and the and the environment affecting the, the plants because you want to control how much sunlight they're receiving and how much water they're receiving so if they're getting rained on and blown around that can affect things and and then of course with no protection you've got insects coming in and everything that we grow is without pesticides so we don't spray any chemicals or anything to kill or scare anything away so we just want to make sure that we're protecting the plants and growing them in a healthy way by building these uh, controlled environment greenhouses, we can keep the pests out, uh, and then we can also control how much sunlight and how much irrigation we're supplying to the plants. And it's and it's all done automatically uh, through these growing channels here that, that kind of work on like a little bit of a conveyor belt system. They're what are called mobile gutter systems, which means that as the, as the plants grow, they slowly move down the greenhouse. They're kind of like, it's like a travelator at the airport. So instead of <laughs> sitting watching your bags go from one end of the, one end of the, the airport to the other, the plants go from one <laughs> end of the greenhouse and, um, and then grow up. So, you know, they start off life. Let me just show you something. They start off life uh, very small. So we'll start off with these, these little tiny seedlings and, um, mm -hmm. and then, we break them off and then put them into into these growing systems to to let them have their final few weeks of life as they grow up. It's a little bit going from you know kindergarten to primary school to high school. This is kind of how it works for, for plants. And and then, um, and then graduation day comes, right? Eventually. And then, and then graduation day comes, and then you know there's there's some of the lettuce that we're growing. And and that one that one I've actually harvested a little bit early. That one's probably got another week or so to go until it gets to the size. Some other. Peter's uh, showing us on Facebook Live, those of you who are on the radio, he's showing us samples of the smaller plot plants and then the, the larger full-grown plants. And please get onto Facebook Live yeah. if you can, because yeah. it's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so what we try to do, and this is, this is not only is the way we've set this up unique, so actually I should explain a little bit more about the greenhouses. What we're doing is different from uh, what you would normally see in a typical greenhouse on a typical farm. Um, you know, I hear a lot this comment about, you know, uh, what is uh, traditional farming? And to me, there's no such thing. Traditional farming is 
the best use of the available technology at the time to grow food as well as we can, and whether that be in volume, nutrition, or, or whatever we're trying to do. Uh, so what we've taken is a very well-built and designed uh, controlled environment greenhouses, but then what we've done is added in the type of automation technology that you would see in a vertical indoor farm. So things like the mobile gutter systems. Uh, we actually use LED lighting to complement or supplement daylight. So, you know, we're out in the, the Singapore sunlight, which is great. So we get free sunlight to grow the vegetables every day, which is the healthiest way to do it. But if we find ourselves in a situation where, like I think you said earlier, there's rain coming, right? So today there might be a bit of rain, there might be a little bit of dark clouds, which will reduce the amount of sunlight we'll get today. Our weather mm -hmm. system monitor, monitors that and says, ah, okay, we probably need two more hours of sunlight. So it'll turn on the lights for two hours to compensate for that tomorrow morning. So this is how we keep the consistency. Uh, which is also why, you know, some people ask us, you know, well, how come we don't do multiple levels or how come we don't do funny shapes? And it's, and it's all about making sure that everything is consistent, everything gets an even amount of light, an e equal amount of nutrients, so that when the plants are harvested, they all come out roughly the same size when they go to the supermarket. Because as, as, as open to, you know, fresh and organic and, and pesticide-free, everybody says there are, but the reason why farming, we're using those, those type of things for years is to try to make everything look pristine and clean. And, and um, it's really, really difficult to do it without those, those things to help. Yes. Peter, how long does it take from the shoot to the grown plant that's being harvested and, and sold in, uh, locally in, in stores here? How long does it take? Well, it depends on the variety. For example, uh, the, the basil that we grow, um, that takes about four weeks from seed until it goes to the supermarket. Uh, and then in the case of the lettuce and the chai sin, that's about six weeks. Uh, I don't know whether you can see that there. So relatively it, quickly. Uh, sorry? Yeah, relatively quickly, and your supply chain is short, so it's it's going to be fresh. When it gets to when it gets to fair price, it's going to be fresh, oh, right. right? Oh, that's right. Yes, yeah, so currently we sell through... Uh, uh, fair price finer stores and it gets to the stores the same day that it's harvested so we'll harvest in the morning and it's there by the afternoon uh, wow. so it's actually really really fresh uh, and we all sell also sell uh, online via red mart as well so you can actually find all our different varieties we've got herbs like basil mint and and uh, rosemary uh, and then we also have the asian greens like the chai sin and stuff like that all available on red mart and fair price and we're in the price range of you know, three to four dollars for leafy greens. Some herbs get up to about eight dollars for the bigger packs. But these packs are really, really nice because because what we actually do, and I'll, maybe I'll open it up to see you, uh, is that what we encourage people to do is not put them in the fridge, which might sound like a strange thing. You don't put your veggies in the fridge. Certainly not in the case of the basil because we actually harvest live plants. So the hmm. plants are still with their roots on when we ship them to you. And there's a reason for that, and that's because they're still alive. There's still some moisture in the roots, which is keeping them alive as they get home to you. And then what you do is you take that, and then you put that in a vase in your kitchen. And that's going to last a week or so, rather than putting in the fridge. And then a few days later, it starts to go brown, or it's not nice anymore. And so, so it's a nice little trick, but it's, it's intentional because it keeps things, it keeps things yeah. fresh and much longer. Yeah. Nice. This is extraordinary. I know, this right? Is I told you. And, and, and yeah. just so I know, because I'm going to be buying these today. Um, <laughs> Is the brand name Comcrop? Is that the name you use that I'm looking for yes, if we yes. go to Lazada or yeah, FairPrice so or whatever? So, it's, so our company name's Comcrop, and you'll see this label. Oops, there we go. Uh, rooftop, uh, pro, rooftop farming produce. Uh, the other thing I'd ask you to look out for, so even if you can't find Comcrop specialty, uh, please choose us first, but if you can't find us, <laughs> at least pick someone else with this logo because what that means is it's being grown in Singapore and it's being mm -hmm. grown under the strict um, uh, supervision of the Singapore Food Agency who have been a fantastic support to this part of the industry because obviously they're helping us uh, uh, grow our businesses so that we can provide into the uh, the uh, the uptake for Singapore because I'm not sure whether a lot of your viewers know but Singapore currently imports over 90 percent of yep. the food that we eat here yeah. and, and it's uh, not and, sustainable you know, yeah. well it's not sustainable I mean you know we have a large different uh, well, large diverse supply chain from different countries all over the world which in normal times that works fine because if one country has a problem we can get the same things from somebody else but what yeah. COVID did is it shut everybody down and then all of a sudden we realized uh, uh, 10 percent isn't going to cut it so so that's that's so that's where this 30 by 30 initiative came from where uh, the current drive is to make sure that between the local producers whether it be vegetable producers like us uh, mm. eggs and also fish producers can supply up to 30% of Singapore's nutritional needs by 2030. So we've got about eight years left to do that. 
Uh, we're certainly doing our part. We've gone in the last few years, when, we, when I first uh, took over the company, we were doing about one tonne a year. Over the next year or so, we've got up to three tonnes. We're now at 20, and by the end of this year, we'll be 200 tonnes a year out of this site because of the ex expansion Get and automation. Wow. Wow. 200 tonnes of food coming out of that, just that one place in, in the woodlands? Yeah, so there's over 3,000 packets of leafy greens will be hitting fair price <laughs> supermarkets by, uh, by by the end of September. So that'll be People, every single day, 3,000 3, packs a day. So please, guys, you've got to help us to support us. Listeners, viewers, <laughs> buy this stuff, will you? I mean, support Singapore growing its yeah. own food, for goodness sake, right? I mean, Peter, yeah. I've got so many yeah. questions. I'll try to be quick, rapid fire. I mean, listening to about, you talk about irrigation, so you're saving water, that's one. There's a transport saving as well. I don't yes. know if you can measure this scientifically, but do you have any idea? of the kind of carbon footprint you're saving because it's just mm. wonderful the That's lack of carbon question. emissions yeah. that you're emitting to great get question. your food from the soil to the supermarket shelf must be extraordinary do you have any idea what it is yeah well so, we, we, so there's 90 percent figures interesting because we actually use 90 percent less water and 90 percent less nutrients than what a soil-based mm. farm would do because once you once you irrigate something in in soil it's gone the water's gone down to the water table and you know there it goes uh, in the case of hydroponic, it's constantly being recycled. Yeah. So we don't have to replace it. We top it up. We filter our water. We, 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 we treat it. And then we all add in the nutrients and it goes around again. And then on the power side of things, we actually use solar to, obviously we're using natural solar, which is sunlight to grow the vegetables, but we also capture solar uh, so that we can run our pumps and our fans and things like that. So not only are we aiming to be carbon neutral, we actually, we actually want to be in a situation when we're generating more yeah. of everything than we use. So obviously we're generating food. We, we, we capture some rainwater to, to top up our tanks. So we have, we have the option of either rainwater capture or um, city water, which is then treated. Um, or, um, or, 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 and also we, we're capturing the solar panels as well. So, so our goal is to catch actually more solar than what we use here. And, and that's yeah. a big differenti differentiation. You know, when we were thinking about expanding our capability, you know, we, we were also thinking about do we do indoor vertical farms and things like that, which we eventually will do. We will have other sites that do that. But currently right now, the, 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 the issue that we face with indoor vertical farms is the expense to run them because, you know, you've got to run the, the LED lighting at least 18 hours a day. And if it's indoor, it means running basically air conditioning 24 hours yeah. a day. And they're yeah. all very power consuming devices. And uh, and so we, we decided to go this route because what we do is we get the best economies of scale, not only in producing vegetables, but also economically as well. Yeah. Because it's not, there's no point us growing 200 tons of vegetable a year if it's too expensive for people to buy. Yes. So, so, we're, so we're really trying to make sure that we are on price parity to what's coming in from Malaysia so that, you know, when, when Singapore consumers get to the supermarket, they're not making a choice about, oh, I want to support Singapore, but I've got to pay more money. They can support Singapore locally produced produce, but be paying the same money and feeding their family a better quality, uh, yeah. a higher nutritional vegetable. Yeah, we're talking to Peter Barber, the co-owner and CEO of Comcrop, uh, on, on target to produce over 220 tons of uh, green leafy vegetables and herbs and things uh, this year alone. Uh, Ian Chen, one of our regular uh, viewers on Facebook Live, is saying, excellent work, Peter. Any plans to expand this island-wide? Um, this, Just to be clear, this is not something that would go on HDB rooftops, right? You need a real structure uh, that is going to be strong enough for this. So given that, where where would your next targets, targets be for building more greenhouses? Yeah, so, so we, we work with JTC because obviously the buildings are industrial scale buildings that allow able to uh, take the weight of these big, big greenhouses and obviously all the water tanks and things like that. So as much as we'd love to do HDB sites, and I think they're important for community gardens and things like that, they don't have the scale or the infrastructure to be able to hold industrial scale production. So yes, we definitely want to expand this out in Singapore. We want to work closely with companies that would then offtake vegetables. So in this case, everything that we produce, well, not everything, but most of what we produce in this farm goes to fair price. You know, as we build other farms we can then start supplying to the other supermarkets and ideally we should be building rooftop farms either on top of their buildings or right next to their buildings because the next area where we save money where we can use that money to employ Singaporeans is by not wasting money on logistics and trucks and distribution things like that ideally we want to be growing right above where it's going to be sent wonderful I mean this is by far the most positive uplifting story I've heard <laughs> great day. We've had our guests previously talk about how California can't grow enough fruit and vegetables. You know, half of the east side of England is scorched at the moment. Western Europe yep. is on fire. Vineyards are ruined. Crops are ruined. And here you've got this wonderful initiative. It's, it's actually made my day, Peter, your story. Oh, it's a brilliant you. story. 
So let's just jump ahead, 2030, 30 by 30, best case scenario, where do you see Singapore being in 2030? Oh, I think we can definitely hit this target. If, if the other farm producers also are able to get things up and running like we are doing, uh, then I think accumulatively we'll be able to hit that target. But my goal is much higher than that. You know, I think Singapore needs to think think of itself a little bit like Holland. It needs to be think like the Netherlands, where you become a, 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 a net food producer where we can actually export. You know, I think wow. if we can get to the point where we can be so cost effective about what we're doing here that not only can we provide to our own community, that we can also export to our regional partners, I think that will prove that we've actually achieved something. And then we can go to California in the UK and help those guys too, you know, if, if that's what we need to do. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm more, I, I than believe happy to, it. more than happy to do that. Yeah. I believe it, Peter. I mean, very briefly, one of the reasons I came back to Singapore was when I was living in Australia for a while. And when I saw a delegation from Australia go to Singapore to learn how to manage their water, supply i thought it's all over it's all over you know australia's got the kind of natural resources that singapore can only dream of exactly and they've gone to singapore to, and i agree with peter in years to come people will be coming to us to see how yeah. to manage our vegetable yeah. supply wonderful the company is calm crop uh, peter barber is the co-owner and ceo those of you out uh, in uh, tv land or on the radio uh, watching or listening fair price finest is where you can buy these uh they're they're on par with the cost of any other vegetables and red mart and, and red mart as well online um those of you who are out there who've got pockets who are investors who are who have spaces industrial spaces where this could happen contact peter we, this, these are the kinds of stories that oh, singapore yeah. needs brilliant. to meet its brilliant, own brilliant, food brilliant. needs and like you say peter hopefully someday to be a net exporter wouldn't that be amazing thanks for your yeah. time today peter Thanks for having me on, guys. I'm Great coming time. down. I'm coming down soon. I want to see this miracle. I'm very please, excited. Please. I want to see I'm, this miracle. I'm saving it for you. Thanks, mate. Brilliant story. Peter, thanks very much. All the best to you, and uh, we'll check in with you again in a couple of months' time and see how it's going. That'd be great. Thanks, guys. <laughs>